Thank you very much for your uh, participation for this meeting of Astella's corporate wide digital transformation driven by analytics. Uh, despite of your busy schedule, I'm Hiro Ikeda, the VP of the Corporate Advocacy and Relations uh, Division. First, let me uh, explain you how to ask the questions for this session at the end of this uh, meeting. On the right side of the screen, you can find the question form, so please use it. Even during the presentation, you can ask the questions. If there are similar questions um, not uh, gathered in a multiple way, then we are going to ask uh, the uh, question in a summarized manner. And uh, this material is available on the website, and in line with the presentation material, we would like to go through this uh, seminar. So the participants for here today is the CSTO, the uh, and also Vice President Naoki Okamura, and also Senior Director of Advanced Informatics and Analytics Masanori Ito. So there are two speakers here today. This material or presentation, uh, oral presentation by representatives for the company and answers and statements by representatives for the company in the QA session includes forward-looking statements based on assumptions and beliefs in light of the information currently available to management and subject to significant risks and uncertainties. Actual final, uh, results uh, may differ materially depending on the number of factors. They contain information on pharmaceuticals including compounds under development, but this information is not intended to make any representations or advertisements regarding the efficacy or effectiveness of these uh, preparations. All sessions, including Q&A, will be held in Japanese, uh, but uh, simultaneous translation into English by interpreters' accuracy cannot be guaranteed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ikeda-san. Hello. I'm Chief Strategy e Officer. My name is Okamura. Thank you very much for your time today. Last year, digital transformation, uh, how to utilize it uh, in a business, uh, inviting Suda, uh, we talked about how we are going to use it in a business before. Digital transformation uh, can be used not only for the business at the practical level, but we can use analytics technologies for corporate-wide management and also all the business uh, decision-making uh, to enhance the quality. And that's what we would like to talk about today. Uh, please show my slide. This page shows our value creation model uh, in a very simplified manner. We have been repeatedly saying that our vision is to be on the forefront of healthcare change to turn innovative science into value for patients. We have to define this uh, value, otherwise we have 15,000 employees globally and they may uh, do their work in a different direction. As you can see on the right, uh, we have the value uh, on the right and uh, value in all capital letters in English. Uh, we are defining uh, what we call value here, and it's uh, the uh, numerator is the outcomes that matter to the patients, and the numerate, uh, denominator is uh, cost to the healthcare system of uh, delivering those outcomes. It's not uh, the cost to be paid by Astellas, so this is uh, the return on investment. Based on this vision, we uh, create value to be offered. So right now, to do so, we have a five-year uh, CSB 2021, corporate strategy plan 2021. Uh, we have extended uh, the strategic products uh, to follow as output. That's one uh, major uh, group. In the uh, medium term, uh, they are going to be our uh, growth drivers. But for the future, uh, continuous growth will be generated by in the following source of value we call or the focus research focus area approach we will have a new product derived from focus area approach as future growth drivers as we have been talking about it many times what is the focus area approach i'd like to briefly explain in 2015 before we changed our vision we were using uh, the philosophy, global category leader. In uh, therapeutic uh, areas, uh, uh, we uh, 
bring uh, management resources uh, into areas defined by the uh, uh, global category leaders or therapeutic areas such as uh, immunology and implantation and also urology. Uh, we have lessons learned there and based on the new vision, we have to follow uh, the cutting edge biologies and the optimal modalities and technologies to change the biology must be a thought. And the combination of biologies and modalities uh, must be the most clear to bring benefits to the patients. So such diseases and the patient populations must be identified. And there, our science uh, can bring value or not, we have to confirm. So instead of uh, coming from uh, the uh, disease areas, but uh, this is uh, to the approach uh, from the uh, scientific uh, innovation. And uh, various uh, projects are to be generated from this triangle. Each one of them uh, is to take a challenge uh, on a uh, uh, cutting edge uh, technology, so the probability of success or the betting average may be low. But once we are able to have a great uh, triangle, we can uh, generate a lot of uh, great uh, projects. So we'd like to increase the probability of success. When we have a triangle here, and if we can bring uh, the uh, clinical project to the clinical stage, that's uh, what we call primary focus. We have genetic regulation, immunology, blindness and regulation, uh, mitochondria, uh, targeted protein degradation. We have five primary focuses ongoing right now. Generally speaking, when you evaluate the investments in that world, cash flow would be calculated, and uh, you have to discount with a discount ratio. And in a long-term business like us, a decision tree uh, will be uh, drawn and decision nodes. Uh, would be applied with the probability of success by adjusting uh, the probability to adapt everything. This is uh, the uh, uh, MPV after uh, a discount uh, on MPV. And when you evaluate a, a single product, uh, this is very a uh, good way because uh, there is one number. If it's uh, positive, you would uh, go, and if it's negative, uh, you don't go for it. As you can see on the slide, this is the uh, latest uh, science with lots of uncertainties, and they're intertwined with each other, and in the same uh, primary focus. Uh, if a project uh, fails, uh, the priority will change for other products. And also the priorities among prior primary focuses will also change. So uh, we cannot really manage uh, just based on a simple uh, value calculation. So we have to take these into consideration. We have to take into account a variety of possibilities to form our portfolio. Analytics and modeling would be uh, essential elements. And Experts uh, can perform uh, modeling and analytics, but that's not enough. You have to interpret the results. The, the management uh, must have uh, such literacy to be able to do so. Uh, two examples of the uh, data-driven management decisions uh, for corporate-wide uh, DX. This is what we are doing. We generate these uh, on our own, but also we, we would also purchase a database from outside, which also uh, we leverage portfolio profiling uh, would be performed. And uh, if we proceed uh, in this way, what is going to be the optimum business model? Uh, we are uh, referring to this for reference. As you can see on the right, in business development, products or companies uh, could be uh, procured from outside. Then uh, with what company uh, the strengths and opportunities uh, can be brought about uh, in which combination between us and another company. This is a rough uh, evaluation, but we can show it with objective uh, data uh, to show it uh, in an easy to understand way. Business as usual. If uh, this is going to be business as usual, in our daily conversation, something similar to this uh, can be uh, discussed uh, in our daily activities, uh, the quality of uh, management uh, can be enhanced uh, naturally. That's our expectations. Going back to the e value creation model I showed you earlier, the most ideal state is a state in which all data from management decisions to individual projects is organically connected to maximize value. As you can see on the right, the value uh, with 
uh, codes uh, can be maximized in this way. Using the uh, cutting edge technologies uh, to manage the company and the business, uh, we have just started. So uh, we are far away from the uh, very ideal situation yet, but still, every day, little by little, we are improving for better management uh, decision making and enhanced quality. We are making efforts uh, to that end. I e, e, gave you a rough overview, but which may not be interesting for you. Uh, young uh, data scientists are led by uh, the following speaker uh, to enhance the quality uh, of uh, management and uh, decision making by creating various models and, and offering uh, the results of the analysis. Ito is going to speak to give you specific examples as well as other details. Uh, Ito-san, please. I'm Masanori Ito. I belong to advanced informatics and analytics and provide solutions using data and analytics to address various corporate-wide management uh, issues internally. My department is mentioned as AIA in the presentation material. Thank you for your time today. Please show my slide. Initially, I'd like to briefly introduce main divisions responsible for driving digital transformation at Astellas. The two in the upper left, AIA and informa Information Systems, are responsible for transformation of the existing pharma businesses. AIA is responsible for advanced data analysis and promotes DX by leveraging digital capabilities such as AI and machine learning. Information Systems is an IT department introducing IT and digital technologies to promote the transformation of the existing operations and renewing our digital infrastructure. These two play a central role in promoting the digital transformation of the entire company in collaboration with various departments and divisions. These two will be integrated in FI 2023. RX Plus Business Accelerator in the left bottom is responsible for the creation of new businesses using digital and non-digital technologies. Today, I'd like to talk about the transformation of the existing businesses by using analytics. So I will explain AIA in a bit more detail. AIA consists of four groups, each focusing on different areas, strategic decision-making support, utilization of the real-world data, promotion and acceleration of drug discovery research, and data governance and data engineering. I am the head of the group called Enterprise Insights and Digital Solutions. I will talk about the example of analytics contributing uh, to our value creation, which Okamura uh, touched upon earlier. Before explaining the focus area approach, uh, let me talk about some of the characteristics of the pharmaceutical industry. First, this is an industry with high uncertainties. At the same time, uh, this industry requires lots of investments. Drug development takes a very long time, like 10 years or more, and has a very low probability of success. Assuming uh, at the start of development uh, can change greatly during that period, which could be as long as 10 years or even longer. For example, advances in science may change biology hypotheses, the number of patients, the status of competitive products under development, and social circumstances. There can be a variety of changes here. There is a high degree of uncertainties while huge investments are required. So we can say uh, it's a business that requires very difficult decisions about where and when to invest. As was mentioned, uh, in our focus area approach, we use cutting-edge biology and modality technology combinations to create innovative medicines for diseases with high unmet medical needs. Taking this kind of approach means challenging the areas where conventional experience and knowledge cannot be directly applied. In the conventional business model, it was possible to utilize past experiences and insights to a certain degree. Prediction from historical data, which has developed substantially with AI in recent years, 
could be uh, difficult uh, in many cases in the decision-making process for a status focus area strategy. Therefore, approach to analytics would be very different from the traditional approach. First, based on available data, information, known theories, and findings, we build relevant hypotheses such, as much as possible. These are the hypotheses about the probability of success of projects, time required for development, market needs, etc. Next, based on those hypotheses, we design many possible future scenarios for risks, opportunities, the development status of competitive products, etc. We describe these scenarios mathematically and simulate them so that we can find ways to improve a status value we create. In other words, we use a data-driven approach to investigate causes from the results or real or data and uh, information, uh, repeat forecasting based on simulations of the hypotheses we built in order to provide outcomes and scenarios that inform and support strategic decision-making. An important point in modeling and simulation business structures is to express the impact of possible events not as single points, but as values with a range. By expressing uh, in ranges, we can generate a variety of scenarios and identify measures to be taken in accordance with the scenarios. The ability to envision diverse scenarios and prepare for action are essential when dealing with future uncertainties, needless to say. As an additional layer, we stimulate the virtual execution of each action and quantify the risks and benefits. This approach can bring about three possible benefits. First, we can consider uh, the risk-benefit trade-off and then propose optimal action. The second advantage uh, is that decisions can be made with a higher degree of transparency and objectivity compared to decision-making purely based on human experiences and intuition. The third benefit is that we can update our measures in response to changes in the internal and external environments. It is possible to provide decision makers with appropriate information on a real-time basis. Some of these points may be difficult to understand, so I will take up the uh, COVID-19 as an example to explain. It was an unknown infectious disease with no epidemiological data, but the countries had to make various decisions. Initially, with little data available, decision makers still needed, so various experts created models to predict the spread of infection and the impact of measures to be taken. They started with simple macro models and kept developing them so that they could make a decision to respect people's behavior while keeping down the infection as much as possible. As the actual situation of the infections became clearer over time, the accumulation of the model improved with uh, data accumulation and uh, we could implement more appropriate measures. In this way, it is useful to utilize data analysis and simulation in a well-balanced manner. The pharmaceutical industry is a high-risk, high-return business with high uncertainties. Our analytics uh, not just show what we know from the past data, but also go even further to consider what actions uh, we should take in the future to create a big value for the company. Over the next few slides, I will show you some uh, concrete examples. I will explain how analysis and that uh, deal with future uncertainties are being used in a variety of situations from individual project planning to overall company portfolio management to progress management against performance goals. This page shows an example of using simulations to calculate the value of an individual project. Project value calculation plays an extremely important role in go no go decision of project and due diligence for in licensing. It is essential for proper allocation of resources for strategy execution. Just like the uh, Okamoto uh, mentioned a little while ago, the uh, traditional NPP uh, method using a discounted uh, cash flows uh, risk adjustment does not account for financial uncertainties. This makes sales forecasts a uh, single point estimation. As uh, computing processing power has improved, it has become possible to execute tens of thousands of simulation experiments at high speed. 
By turning project value estimates from a single point to a value range, future risks can be evaluated quantitatively. As mentioned previously, new drug development takes a long time. Uncertainties in factors that contribute to the value of a project, such as the probability of success and revenue prospects, vary, vary greatly depending on the project stage. For example, projects in early stage of development have larger fluctuations or, or up and down or, in other words, volatility. In a new uh, COVID example that I mentioned earlier, there is a period when the infection has not yet started. There is a similar pattern of fluctuations in this numerical focus when considering how much the infection will spread and how severe it will be. The simulation also expressed the magnitude of uncertainty during this period of fluctuations. For example, on this slide on the right side, uh, the uh, red uh, is a lower fluctuation, and uh, uh, blue indicates the upper fluctuation. And as you see, and on the slide, uh, project value evaluation, the um, you have to consider a lot of factors such as R and D cost, success, cost and such and such. Simulations can quantify how much these variables affect the calculated value. This is called as a sensitivity analysis. Simultaneously considering the uncertainties of all factors is most impossible if it has to be done by uh, manually, but simulation makes this impossible possible. We believe that using advanced simulations to increase the accuracy of value calculations that contribute to strategic investment uh, through advanced simulations will have an impact measured in tens of billions of yen. On the previous slide, we evaluated the business value of a single project using simulation. On this slide, we are evaluating the value of a multi-project portfolio. Through portfolio simulation, we are able to prioritize projects, and also we can determine the appropriate portfolio balance for the company. This slide is an example of using a simulation or simulation to quantify the effect of the key feature of the focus area approach, the Imozu method, or the continuous stream of new drugs, not one-off project. We compare the result of models where the, uh, this Imozu method was used to increase the correlation between projects. Uh, for example, the portfolio is de designed so that if the lead project achieves the POC, then the subsequent project can also achieve POC, the FA approach against models where uh, there was a limited correlation between projects and portfolio, the non-FA approach. Doing so, we found when FA approach-based uh, portfolios were compared to non-FA approach uh, portfolios, the probability for the occurrence of a high profit event was dramatically increased. As you see it in this simulation analysis on the right graph, toward the right, then portfolio value goes up. So in this red, red again, the um, probability of the uh, gaining a bigger uh, profit is likely to be increased. So we believe these uh, results validate the FA approach. Here is an example of how simulation can be used for mid-term goal setting and also performance management. We, st uh, we simulate variation in sales for the entire company, including both launched products and programs in our pipelines. As mentioned earlier, project progress is affected by many um, uncertainties, such as the result of clinical trials and the activities of other companies. Early stage projects are particularly subject to great uh, uncertainties, so deviations from assumptions often occur. If the simulation results indicate a high possibility of a deviation from their target, we are able to pretest intervention strategies by identifying measures to fill the gap, rerunning the simulation, evaluating the risks and the benefits of the measures, and determining the optimal plan. The focus of this long-term company-wide strategic investment planning is to plan the measures required to increase corporate value rather than improving the accuracy of forecasting sales. When uh, controlling uh, business issues, when confronting business issues from medium and long-term perspectives, it is uh, quite useful to uh, make use of the assumption of rent simulation on top of the uh, data-driven approach. 
AI models like Open uh, AI uh, GT4 are data-driven technologies that are trained with a huge number of parameters from a huge amount of data. In contrast, strategic decision-making and management requires solving uh, complex trade-off problems involving future investments and multiple factors with limited data. In our example, we used a hypothesis-oriented technique to create scenarios and make a deductive guess. So uh, data-driven AI is of interest uh, to every industry, but uh, Astellas is promoting, promoting management uh, DX that utilizes both data-driven and a hypothesis-oriented uh, models, which we believe is competitive advantage. So far, I have explained in detail the use of analytics for the focus area approach, which is the core of our stellar business activities. From here, I will introduce examples of specific initiatives. Here we see a diagram that Okamura showed at the beginning, but it now shows the overall picture of how Astellas creates value. At Astellas, we use analytics in every area of this value creation to maximize value. Here are some of the initiatives that AIA is involved in. Each box represents a crossover area of Astellas' value creation. The initiative in the upper right, calculate value based on the real-world data and select the optimal indication, determines uh, which indication or indications will yield the highest value for a product. Similarly, insights of innovative organizational structure through utilization and analysis of human resources data in the lower left is an initiative connecting the input of human capital on the left with the human resources and organization at the core of business activities. By improving utilization of this input with the power of analytics, we expect that the final value will increase. And the box orange uh, color, then color intensity, shows if data-driven uh, approach is utilized or on top of the data-driven simulation uh, is utilized. This might be the repetition, but the Astellas utilizes both data-driven and also assumption-oriented uh, approaches uh, for the uh, management uh, DX so that we can gain the uh, competitive edge. All are included in this presentation material, but because of the time, we would like to focus on only those with this uh, thicker square and others uh, you, well, you can refer to the appendix. So the first one is the a simple DX case where the data-driven approach is utilized. This is an example of a visualization for project progress management. Many projects are being implemented to achieve the strategic goals set in the CSP 2021. Most of these projects are cross-functional and so require multiple departments to work together. While the information related to each project is centrally managed, uh, the amount of information was so large that it was not possible to understand the progress of each project at a glance, nor was there any uh, mechanism to grasp the situation in real time or near real time. We have developed a dashboard that automates the analysis and processing of huge amounts of data and supports decision making for management strategies. The progress of project is linked to each strategic goal and objective, making it possible to prioritize projects and extract trends. As a result, we were able to reduce the time required from data entry to analysis results from three days to 15 minutes. This is the second case. Demand focusing is a fundamental activity in most industries for ensuring a stable supply of products in supply chain management, and the pharmaceutical industry is uh, no different. Model accuracy can be improved by tailoring the prediction model to the uh, target disease and a patient profile of the drugs, such as the past results, seasonal effects, and the calendar effects. In this project, we developed a platform that automatically generates multiple time series focusing models of different types, compares the focusing capabilities of each model, and then selects the most appropriate model for each product and market. Increased accuracy in demand focusing is expected to lead to more stable product supply and cost estimation. 
Compared to the previous portfolio analysis and mid-term plan analysis that contributed mid to long-term strategy decision-making where solutions were centered on hypothesis-based simulation and modeling techniques, the dashboard and supply chain analysis examples rely on data to understand the issues and solutions. Here, data-driven methods are central to the solution. This is the third and the last example. This is about a bit different from the uh, previous one. So uh, as has been mentioned a little bit, here is a bit more advanced method is uh, utilized. So let me go into more detailed explanation about how we value the project with a high degree of uncertainty. As we have said many times before, the progress of early stage project is subject to great uncertainties. In these uncertain times, flexibility in decision making itself is of high value. The earlier the project stays, the more room there is for making various decisions, such as strategic withdrawal or expansion of indications. So depending on the situations, we can make the flexible decision. In other words, there are many opportunities to maximize the benefits of success while minimizing the cost of value. Therefore, factoring in the value of flexibility into current value is important for early stage evaluation. However, traditional calculation methods have not been able to fully appropriate the, appreciate the value of flexibility. Therefore, we are implementing a new method based on the concept of real options. The reason I said based on is that while real options themselves are concepts derived from financial engineering, we do not directly incorporate them into the value calculations of early stage pharmaceuticals. Uh, so we utilize the Asina Liu simulation approach so that we can make the uh, advanced option evaluation. We have also optimized the programming to calculate the value quickly. As a result, it can be used in situations where a quick turnaround for value calculation is required, such as evaluating the introduction of external assets. So these are some examples of specific initiatives which are introduced today. This might be the repetition, but uh, we make use of the uh, data-driven as well as a hypothesis-oriented simulation approach for a management DX, and we believe that uh, this is going to be the competitive analytics uh, capability for us. As Okamura mentioned in the very beginning, Arcelus's goal for data analytics is to maximize value by organically connecting all kinds of data from management decisions to individual projects. The use cases that are introduced are point solutions. In other words, these analytics provide partial solutions when viewing the value creation chain as a whole. In the future, we aim for the complete end-to-end -end analysis value creation chain uh, to organically connect all data and create a great uh, value in the most efficient manner. This is uh, all from me. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. We now would like to uh, take questions uh, from the audience. If you have a question, please enter your question into the question form shown on the right-hand side of the screen and submit. In this q &A session, uh, we will take questions related to this uh, explanatory meeting. If there are multiple questions which are similar to each other, we may group them together. Thank you for your understanding. Please enter your questions. We have the first question. How analytics can contribute to the value defined by Astellas? Please explain once again. 
How analytics can contribute to the value defined by a status? Please explain once again. Thank you for your question. As uh, was mentioned in today's presentation, the value defined by Stellas was explained today, capital value, and also uh, outcomes that matter to the patients divided by cost to the healthcare system. There are a variety of value chain in the pharmaceutical industry. Experts in their respective field are working very hard. We have uh, lots of data uh, in the individual uh, areas, so using a data-driven uh, approach uh, to start with a DX uh, in the field. And then, as uh, we talked about today, for management uh, decisions, we have to make management decisions, and there are a lot of uncertainties. Even if we don't have a lot of data, we have to look into the future, like 10 years' time from now, to make major decisions, like investment decisions. Uh, in line with the data-driven approach, we have to consider scenarios and also to evaluate, uh, to address the uh, uncertainties using a risk-based uh, approach. By uh, working on uh, all of these, we can contribute to the value. And organically, if this is going to be connected, orga organically, uh, we can uh, create more synergy to maximize the value, in my view. Me? Okay. In principle, the e value uh, is uh, with a numerator and a denominator. Whether we can uh, um, minimize uh, the denominator and uh, maximize the e numerator, uh, the numerator is outcome, but actually a lot of elements, diverse elements are included in uh, the numerator because of the drugs. Whether uh, it's going to be effective or not, efficacy is important. Uh, effectiveness, efficacy may be great, but patients may have to uh, stay in hospital then, uh, or the efficacy may not be so great, but uh, patients can be taken care of at home, which is better. This is a very complicated issue. And uh, just looking at uh, the uh, mere uh, sales values or uh, simple parameters to calculate this, you can uh, come up with an answer quickly, but you may make a wrong decision. And very complicated uh, systems could be introduced here, but it will take time, and the results will be complicated. You have the results, and you don't know how to interpret the results. And what uh, uh, can serve as bridges are the analytics. We have the data uh, in the world. Uh, Instead of uh, just making decisions based on the data available in the world, y you build hypotheses. And if uh, that happens with a certain probability, uh, what could happen? That can be shown to us proactively in advance. Uh, we use uh, simulation technologies like that. Then we might have missed big opportunities, but we may be able to bet on them. Or we may have our own understanding, and something great could happen. But uh, there can be a pitfall of just a few percentage e probability, and company may not be able to go anywhere. There can be such a risk. This uh, We would build a very e complicated uh, systems, but the results can be shown to us in an easy-to-understand way. This is like a crystal ball, in my view. Thank you. Next question. In FY2023, AIA division and information system divisions are planned to be integrated. What's the background of this? Or what kind of synergy would you expect uh, thanks to this integration? So the uh, background of this integration and a synergy is likely to be bared uh, with this integration. Let me answer. Well, the uh, under the management strategy, there is the uh, information system uh, division as well as advanced informatics uh, analytics division. So those are hanging there, just like the uh, brothers. And in the beginning of uh, Ito's uh, presentation, uh, he mentioned that, that there are three division, AIA information system, as well as Rx Plus. Rx Plus is uh, following uh, something uh, different. 
a different business, so let me put it aside. But AIA and information systems, well, each strength and uh, uh, each roles uh, have been existing. That is so true. However, because uh, uh, we thought uh, that it is very, uh, better to have uh, these two integrated uh, so that uh, we can share the skills and also we can uh, share the information. Well, sometimes uh, we, uh, each uh, divisions have the overlapping uh, of the things that they are doing or uh, they are not proactive enough uh, to um, do the activities because of the uh, separated existence of these uh, two different uh, divisions. So with uh, integrating uh, this too, we believe that uh, we can change the situation. I'm not a specialist of the digital itself. So the uh, management strategies, um, if uh, they can uh, handle this too in a very uh, flexible manner, but uh, so far it was not really so. And currently we consider it is more effective if there is the uh, one uh, contact or the window which uh, can cover uh, these two functions. So from this perspective, we decided to integrate uh, these two. That's all from me. Thank you. We'd like to move on to the next question. Investments into AIA. To what degree you are investing into AIA? Uh, initiatives are uh, uh, mainly internal initiatives uh, by Astellas, or are you promoting collaboration with other IT companies as well? This is the first question, as far as you can answer. I don't have specific figures at hand, so maybe you can contact uh, the corporate advocacy and relations data. Uh, quite a huge amount of money is being invested. Uh, we are confident about it. We have data scientists uh, securing uh, a necessary number of data scientists uh, requires a huge amount of money, uh, considering the human resources and uh, financial investments, uh, we are investing a lot, specifically internal initiatives or a collaboration with uh, outside companies. Uh, Ito-san can respond uh, both. We have a uh, joint research with uh, outside partners, and also, depending on the group or tower, uh, it's different, but uh, we have internal initiatives. Uh, business challenges we have are being resolved uh, by many uh, initiatives. AIA itself belongs to corporate. And we have uh, collaborate, being collaborating with uh, various uh, sections uh, within the company in our work, external capabilities could be leveraged in some cases. But in principle, we have internal business people. We uh, collaborate uh, so that we resolve uh, business uh, challenges in many cases. Thank you very much. From the same person, uh, there is the second question. Analytics uh, can uh, generate the competitive edge to identify. With uh, limited data, information must be provided about uh, investments uh, decisions, like real option evaluation. For early stage uh, candidate products and inline sensing products, uh, your insight uh, will be greatly improved. Uh, is this an initiative uh, leading to the competitive edge uh, in identifying uh, these areas compared to other mega farmers? So let me respond. When we uh, analyze uh, our capability to, to identify a great project, uh, it would be enhanced, or, but rather, of course, for me, the Accuracy and the quality of decision making can be enhanced. That's my belief. But as I said before, early stage products as a uh, long time into the future with lots of uncertainties. So in the case of real option, uh, future uncertainties and the flexibility of decision making 
must be incorporated into the current valuation. And looking at the actual compounds and technologies, we can approach the actual value to make the more accurate evaluation. In that sense, our insight or the ability to identify great things so that we can invest and the quality can be enhanced as well as the value. There are other things. It's not just about uh, option and uh, evaluation, but scenario analysis uh, would enhance the value. But if I may add, just enhancing uh, the uh, accuracy of prediction is not enough. Considering the future uncertainties, we can optimize the action we can take right now. That's our focus. Just increasing uh, the uh, accuracy of the e forecast is not uh, the e final objective uh, in the end. How I should explain? I don't know. To begin with, when you say our capabilities to identify whether it's good or bad, if we know that, uh, decision making can be e e easy because you can just select what's great. But rather, we may think uh, something is very good, and as we proceed, it may not so good. Initially, you may think it's not so great, but with a certain trigger, uh, it may turn into something great. That's why uh, drugs are very difficult. That's the uh, premise. What uh, did we do before? Based on uh, these assumptions, we calculate the cash flow and we uh, multiply the probability of success, the NPV after um, probability adjustment. It's going to be a 300 million yen uh, positive. And if we just hear about it, uh, we say we'd go for it. But if the NPV is uh, the same as 300 million yen, the probability of success is higher. Cash flow would be generated earlier, but it can be very thin in uh, nature, or it may take a long time to develop. And the probability of success uh, may be very low, but once uh, it's going to be successful, it can generate huge amounts of uh, uh, revenue. And uh, the, uh, the result could be the same as 300 million yen after discount. So uh, which are you going to choose uh, when uh, the uh, it's the same 300 million yen. We cannot really select just based on this information. Our capabilities and the product portfolio must be uh, looked at uh, closely, or which is uh, the 300 million yen we require right now. We take this 300 million yen, but in case of a certain event, we would stop it and uh, shift to something else. Such a complicated decision making must be made possible. To do so, uh, point uh, forecasting and the probability of success which should not change, and mechanical calculation of uh, numbers, uh, we shouldn't look at it. What kind of situation will uh, impact us uh, into the future? Uh, it must be visualized, otherwise it's not going to be useful for us to make decisions. As Ito showed, there is a range somewhat, and with uh, certain priorities, it may show which is uh, more important for us right now uh, until when we should continue investments and uh, at what timing we should uh, make the final decision to maximize the overall return. It's a very complicated decision making process. And uh, it, in order to contribute to the discussions as a, a premise, a lot of information is being provided to us. Thank you very much. Next. That's going to be a question here to about the size of the investment. It's about the question uh, regarding the uh, number of the employees. AIA division system information divisions, actually how many uh, people, uh, how many employees are uh, belonging to these two divisions? It might be difficult to come up with a, a number. However, what would be the uh, relatively the size? Well, I don't have the number in my hands here, but AIA, a little less than 100. I think that is about the size. And information system division, 
I don't have, uh, sorry, the number. I think uh, the number of the employees is uh, bigger than AIA. Right. Probably it's about the size in the ratio of one to two. To what extent if we can just uh, close the number, I don't know. Right, it may be difficult to answer the specific uh, numbers, but I think uh, that's about the same. And that is the uh, question from the uh, say um, person. What of the frequency of the uh, correction, analytics uh, correction for each uh, portfolio? What will be the timing? What will be the frequency for that? Well, in the past, we didn't done. Uh, we didn't do the correction uh, so frequently. But currently, quarterly wise, the model is updated. So that's the process we've introduced for that purpose, as much as possible in real time basis. Portfolio management will be introduced, and uh, we've already started that project about a couple of years ago. And uh, it's been quite utilized. So financial analysis update frequency is now increased, I believe. Well, for example, the materials for the shareholders meeting, the portfolio value is uh, one of the criteria for the yearly bonus for us. The number cannot be uh, discretionary changed. That is based upon the very rigorous SOP. At a certain timing, uh, certain events are corrected to uh, fix the uh, value. So such rules are meticulously decided. But the, when, and the data for the uh, project um, uh, correction at a certain point of time, well, there are some factors internally as uh, well as externally, like the uh, competitor's uh, situation that has to be taken into consideration, but not necessarily about a specific uh, um, project. But, uh, for example, IRA is now introduced uh, officially as a role in such kind of uh, societal factor uh, happens, then it's not something we can wait for the quarterly basis of the management. So depending on the situation, we have to be flexible uh, for the uh, uh, correction. So uh, at the one hand, we are quite uh, rigorous based upon the rule. And uh, on the other hand, there are areas that evaluation will be changed depending on the events and the factors that happens at a certain point of time. Thank you very much. Next, about phasolinitant, scenario analysis about phasolinitant. It may be difficult to answer uh, to a certain degree, but please share as much as possible. A team is doing scenario analysis. What kind of cases are being assumed? Bullish case or a bearish case uh, included in your assumptions? And what kind of action you are going to take based on each case? As far as you can share, please respond. Are you, are you doing this? Yes, but we are trying to do this. This is a very concrete thing, and it's very difficult to respond. So I'd like to uh, give you a somewhat ambiguous answer. But roughly speaking, as we announced the other day, this February PDUFA date was expected for approval for February this year. That was the assumption for us to develop our uh, plans, but it was extended by three months uh, against our expectations. Because of the three months extension, if we take it as is, uh, what would happen? Uh, what should be done to catch up with this? The initial year is going to be uh, 12 months or nine months. It's difficult to catch up. But in the longer term, uh, we should be able to uh, catch up with investments. If we increase investments, can we catch up? Or investments may remain the same. The timing of uh, uh, usage of money in, can be changed to catch up. In the near term, uh, there can be a variety of events which can occur, and uh, there can be a variety of action we can take. We can combine a lot of things to simulate, then with this additional amount of investments, it could be acceptable. So we can accept uh, 
that much additional investment to select the scenario to catch up. Or this year it's very tough, so we cannot make additional investments. So in the longer term, the results could be unsatisfactory to a certain extent, but we can go this far uh, in uh, the current fiscal year. For example, we are asking for such information right now. It's not going to be meaningful just for decision-making, but when fizzolinitant is going to be launched into the market, because of the simulation we use uh, assumptions and conditions, whether they are realized or not, uh, must be monitored and checked. Uh, this is going to serve as a guide to monitor and check. We're not just talking about the pie in the sky, but the model we use in this process uh, can be used to verify uh, the uh, trajectory for growth. In that sense, it's a useful tool. So it's not just the end of the story with uh, one analysis, but it can be used for multiple purposes. So a great model is being uh, built. Thank you very much. It was a difficult question, but thank you for responding. Yeah, it Next question, slide 15. That's about one million simulation, and uh, there is the uh, probability. I would like to get the explanation about that as uh, well. So you mentioned the uh, generation probability is uh, overwhelmingly increased with where that uh, large uh, profit can be expected. But on the other hand, if a book cannot be gained, then there might be the situation where that the other projects also become um, difficult uh, to make a success. What do you think about it? That is right. If you look at this, this uh, horizontal NPV to the right, the value is high, and vertically, it's the uh, probability of occurrence. And to the right, the mountain is higher. Uh, you see that happens uh, in this case compared to the ordinary approach. So this is whether we can identify the uh, value of uh, the uh, occurrence. But to the uh, left, you see the focus area approach has a higher risk of the loss, big loss. This is a quite natural thing. So we see the continuous stream of uh, new drugs, or uh, Imozuru methyl. In other words, that there is a correlation of the projects. In that case, if one thing it doesn't make success and we have a multiple investments, then the things as a whole would not make success. Yes, so that kind of failure uh, might uh, take place. Thank you very much. Let me move on to the next question. Regarding the uh, case uh, examples, today, you shared uh, project evaluation uh, examples, the uh, environmental changes due to COVID-19, uh, the future environment changes, uh, and response to them, uh, cost analysis, and also cost effectiveness analysis for all MRs, and the optimal MR structure for the future, and the structure analysis for uh, sales and marketing and medical affairs. So, what about the examples of using this for uh, cost analysis in these cases? Specific examples of cost analysis in sales and marketing uh, will come from now on. Uh, we tried uh, once in some areas, so it varies, but cost analysis in the corporate strategy department we were discussing right now, company-wide, how to allocate resources to optimize. And just looking at the costs uh, would not be enough. To enhance the operating profits, we have to look at the benefits and costs. We have to look at the trade-off. We have to go deeply into that area in your analysis. Commercial resource allocation, Depending on the products and uh, the uh, target items, uh, it can vary. Even if it may be mature, it may be into the market for many years in a business. Then we have past data, historical data. Um, we can use a statistical model. At the same time, what kind of commercial activities would be uh, 
done、uh, to have a certain responsiveness based on such data, optimal resource allocation can be considered. There can be such an approach.、Uh, like the f e s o l i n a n t example, we are going to do for it. Uh, do it for the future. We don't have a lot of data. How to allocate resources there? As was mentioned before, various scenarios and also discussions with experts、uh, will、uh, take place、uh, to perform simulations. So there are such activities right now. Thank you very much. Next question. Uh, the, uh, the chart or the、uh, analysis of the range, as has been explained,、uh, utilized for the decision making, but decision is made by the executive directors or board of directors meeting.、Uh, the discussion will take place there, or external or,、uh, directors would join for the decision making. In what way decision will be made? Or based upon、uh, such a situation, the roles of the uh, external uh, directors will be uh, changed. Uh, they would be、um, the, basically the supervisor、uh, as its position, but how would it be changed? Thank you very much. Well, in our company, we have the uh, clear uh, demarcation between board of directors and also the、uh, executive management. Board of directors are based upon the、uh, strategic、uh, perspective, and for each project uh, that is uh, discussed and the decision is made within the、uh, meeting of executive directors. So, the result of the analytics, who would use it、uh, for the decision making? Basically, the executive directors. Well, executive committee, CXO,、uh, the members of the,、uh, them will be the decision maker. Uh, but uh, for ideal style,、uh, the uh, vice president of a division、uh, is expected to make a decision based upon this analysis. Having said that, so the range is limited. But it wouldn't go such high.、Uh, it has a wider range, so it'll be a great thing if you go high up, but it'll be a great failure if I go low, quite low down. So, depending on the level, we have to make a, a decision. For example, ex,、uh, executive、uh, director level, we make a decision, but the board of the directors、uh, don't know、uh, anything about the decision making. That is not the situation we would like、uh, to avoid. So, we need to increase the level of the literacy among us, the、uh, external、uh, directors as well. But when it comes to the uh, drug uh, uh, expertise, the、uh, decision、uh, making and、uh, discussions, well, to what extent we expect、uh, from them for their understanding? Well, Of course, we want them to understand the essential level、uh, for the decision uh, making uh, in a sufficient manner. So, to that level, the literacy is needed to be enhanced. So, that is the role that we can expect to the external、uh, directors. And、uh, also, we would like to have further occasions of、uh, communication. And in what way the uh, uh, analytics is utilized, and that is what we would like to honestly explain to them. Again, we have a board of directors meeting, and depending on situations, we select the hot topics. And outside of the、uh, board of directors meeting, we have the program to share the information. And、uh, often, the VP of the、uh, executive level or the team、uh, in charge of a certain project、uh, will. Have opportunity to provide、uh, the information to them. So we have such occasions. It's not really a training, but we have the occasion so that they can have the、uh, discussions. So, although the execution and also supervising are separated, however,、uh, it's not something that the、uh, supervisors are completely、uh, being excluded from the、uh, execution. So we have a very good balance of the、uh, demarcation of the roles. Next question. The economic benefits to be brought about by DX is the topic of the question. Today, you talked about Analytics DX. 
to be utilized for the uh, selection of the value of individual projects, a potential or benefit could be as much as billions of yen, according to your presentation. As was presented today, the e pharmaceutical industry e is uh, an industry with high uncertainties. How do you estimate the economic benefits? As you explained, do you estimate uh, the economic benefits by the combination of the data-driven approach and the hypothesis-driven approaches? Today, I picked up a certain project uh, like supply chain and dashboard. In those cases, we try to accelerate the speed of uh, decision making or, or optimize the cost by taking such approaches. Various industries are discussing RDX by introducing uh, these elements. Uh, we can reduce the work process or so we can. Uh, lower the cost or which we can calculate, so it's the same. And also, for example, in the clinical development, a certain drugs are very mature, and in the real-world uh, area, uh, there are already a lot of uh, real-world data uh, to get additional indications clinical or studies may not be performed uh, by using real-world data uh, to file submission. Is that what we call DX? Uh, it's uh, industry-specific, but the clinical cost can be high. If uh, this can be done, we can reduce a huge amount of costs, and we can deliver uh, the value to the patients earlier. Today, particularly in the uh, first half of my presentation, I talked about the strategic uh, decision making and analytics, which can contribute to that scenario analysis rather than data driven or controlling uncertainties. It's a very difficult thing to examine and verify because we are discussing uh, the future like 10 years from now. And if we try to uh, see whether our answer was correct or not. We cannot do a lot of projects. It will take a lot of time. So uh, after uh, 10 years, uh, we may have uh, answers for just three uh, things or so. And even if we try to verify our uh, answer, it may be difficult to check how much we can estimate. Regarding the strategic decisions, uh, there are a lot of difficulties. But one thing I'd like to uh, explain, statistically, uh, this is the discussion of the expected uh, value, uh, which is the basis. For example, if you have a coin, 50% uh, uh, for the top, 50% uh, for the bottom, uh, if you get uh, the uh, top uh, 100 yen uh, can be received if, with one of the two possibilities. If you uh, continue to uh, throw the coin, uh, the uh, the end balance is going to be uh, the same. Uh, but uh, you can um, get uh, the expected value in the end. You can get uh, the uh, top. You try to find such a cost uh, to enhance the quality of the judgment because of a certain cost uh, will have a uh, higher probability of um, showing the uh, top instead of the bottom. Or we can combine uh, what would show uh, profiling uh, in a clear way. What should be the combination to maximize the value for the company uh, must be analyzed, as Okamura mentioned, by using uh, these combinations. There can be a huge amount of extended value uh, we could expect and uh, we can generate. Yeah. <laughs> okamura -san, anything to add? I didn't mention uh, 10 billion yen or billions of uh, yen. It's not me. But on page 11, I think, the probability of success, 8%, development period, 10 years, and the cost, uh, 10, $1 billion. Looking at these figures, by changing the probability of success, what is going to be the uh, impact level, you can imagine easily. As Ito said, it's difficult to check whether our answer was correct or not. In this field, 10 years from now, 
looking back today, Okamura mentioned uh, 10 billion, but you may say 10 years later that uh, you didn't get uh, 10 billion yen. But because of the expectations that we can have uh, that much uh, impact, that's why uh, we do not hesitate to invest a huge amount of money. I'm applying pressure to uh, Dr. Ito. Instead of uh, the uh, lot of bills uh, in front of us, uh, this will contribute to uh, the value enhancement uh, for the company to the future. That's why I'm supporting other team. Thank you. Next question. So uh, just uh, like uh, it also mentioned, uh, Abe, well, you mentioned about the value calculation uh, based upon RWT. It's uh, page 24 of appendix. So the uh, value calculation based upon real world data is already utilized for the negotiation of the reimbursement. If so, the uh, result of that analysis is uh, now approved as a consensus with the uh, negotiation counterpart or, for example, payer. Well, let me answer. In Japan and the United States, the situation is probably different. In the case of the United States, that is, uh, yes, happening. Or ra rather, I would say that you have to do the analysis based upon the real world data, otherwise the uh, value cannot be maintained. That's my understanding. Therefore, this type of approach is now essential. This is expected to be done. Of course, this is not only about the price of the drugs. This approach is utilized here and there. And this is uh, not done only for the purpose of the reimbursement. Of course, reimbursement uh, is where that it is quite important to utilize this kind of approach. And I think the situation would be different if uh, the uh, Japan would go in that way as well. Thank you very much. Next. Sorry, I don't know enough, but methodologies to utilize assimilations into management decisions uh, is being done in one way or another by the pharmaceutical industry, or is this a unique approach by Astellas? Using simulations in the in management decisions, is this a, a common approach used in the pharma industry, or is this a um, unique approach by Astellas? When it comes to simulations, uh, it's a, a broad term. They use uh, data to perform simulations. And if uh, this happens next year, uh, what shall we do? For example, forecasting next year, that could be called a type of simulation. So at various levels, different companies have uh, their own ways. I'm sure others are also incorporating simulations. Otherwise, uh, this is a very volatile world right now. So the situation today, uh, continuing to uh, 10 years' time, uh, I don't think nobody is thinking that way in this industry. So what would be the potential risks? If you go this way, what sh uh, shall we do? If you go that way, what shall we do? Uh, simulations, or, or some may call this si uh, scenario planning, I'm sure they're doing this as well. How objectively you can evaluate this by using data? Whether they do this or not, and also for one particular event, instead of doing this for one particular event, a lot of ongoing things in a complicated way to simulate uh, the entire situation. I think that's the difference, whether they are doing this or not. I think that's the difference. Yes. Next question. In the presentation today, there was no explanation on this, but we refer to Appendix Slide 27. There is a description about dynamic patient flow model. This is what I'm quite interested in. Would you please briefly explain about this? If the slide can be shown on the screen, would you please come up with that? And a related question. 
Uh, this kind of data is utilized for the current sales forecast as well. Thank you for the question. So here you see the uh, slide. With the uh, previous example, when it comes to, for example, the launch of new products, the sales at that time is what we would like to forecast as much as possible for the appropriate allocation of the commercial resources or to uh, coming up with the marketing strategies. That is a quite important step to improve the uh, product value. In this example here, uh, that is one um, new product and how it can be used in the actual clinical setting that is analyzed based upon real-world data. Having said that, well, I've been saying that this is based upon their real-world data, but that is a new product. The product hasn't been launched yet. So we have to utilize the information of the uh, similar diseases. What is the current suffer of the uh, patients? What kind of uh, treatment flow is taking place uh, for the similar diseases? So those are all analyzed. In the case of the uh, new COVID-19, there is uh, this new drug launched in the market and uh, information flow data is going to be accumulated. Then uh, that uh, situation is learned by the model so the uh, accuracy improves. And we have uh, so much of the information that, uh, there. Then with the uh, data-driven and uh, time series approach utilized uh, based upon the uh, past uh, sales uh, data, we can uh, focus the uh, sales in the future. But just like the case of the Fizzolina tent a little while ago, for the commercial marketing strategy planning, even before the data is collected in a sufficient manner, we start. We need to start earlier for the consideration. So in that case, we would like to make use of the real-world data that is going to be accumulated, and we would like to also introduce the factor of the simulation so that we can do what-if analysis, many what-if analysis will be necessary to be conducted. And the simulation at the time, well, macro, uh, the simple Monte Carlo for the variable generated, rather than that approach, we consider that the each uh, patient is an agent uh, to consider about the uh, behavior. So such kind of a micro level of the simulation is also possible. That is something we would like to do. Thank you. A similar question about slide 26. There is a slide on a long-term sales forecast. Uh, could you uh, briefly explain this page? And to what degree uh, the accuracy of the forecast can be enhanced by this? As you can see on the slide, We make long-term sales forecasts to be leveraged for marketing strategy in this example. There are two major ways. As has been mentioned many times before, if you haven't accumulated a lot of data, we build hypotheses to use Monte Carlo simulation methodology. The government price control or uh, reimbursement situation or competitive situation and uh, share expansion, uh, it can be a, a lot of impact from these events. So such impact would be evaluated to make a forecast. Of course, uh, this has been done from before, but whether the events can actually occur or not, and uh, the volume of the impact uh, was a point estimation in many cases. As I explained initially, uh, we should capture this uh, in a range to uh, quantify the uncertainties. To ensure better risk management. That's about the simulation. And if you have a certain amount of uh, data uh, for a product, we would use a time series uh, forecasting. Uh, sufficient time has passed after launch. There aren't many events uh, to affect. Uh, then uh, we use a certain approach for uh, these products. Appropriate analytics approaches for issues would be utilized 
and applied. What is uh, the precision uh, or, or the accuracy of the forecast if uh, a sufficient amount of data is accumulated using advanced statistical methods? Then the uh, precision and the accuracy of forecast has been enhanced in many cases. Using the simulation, uh, it's yet to come. As I explained before, it's very difficult to verify. What's important is uh, the model we built depending on the update of the information, we have to update them uh, to enhance the accuracy and the precision. Thank you very much. Yes. Next question. As a AIA division, what would you like to achieve? Or what is the strength of AIA division of Astellas Pharma? What would you like to achieve? Where is the strength of Astellas AIA? Would you like to try? Well, the pharmaceutical companies, well, for example, the drug uh, discovery, the analytics uh, is utilized by the specialists there uh, for the uh, dis uh, drug discovery. And uh, in the uh, clinical trials, there are the uh, specialists for the uh, clinical trial analysis. And when it comes to commercial, there is a specialist for the uh, marketing analysis. And in that perspective, I think uh, we are no different. But AIA, that belongs to the corporate, and they collaborate with the experts in the different divisions so that we can come up with a value. Of course, there are some challenges. The collaboration is not necessarily always smooth to make a success, but we have experience of five and six years, and the issues themselves are already identified, and we've already identified the solutions for those issues. And also AIA data scientists, well, they are data scientists, but uh, uh, it's not that, that they all do the uh, machine learning for uh, in front of the PC. They have the focus of the certain business uh, domain, and they have their own each different capabilities. So uh, the appropriate person is uh, allocated to the um, appropriate projects uh, to do this type of the analysis, I think uh, that is probably a still a unique approach. Well, if I would say that the I want to realize this, and that might be really dream like the things, but the uh, members that belong to this department actually realize them. That is a wonderful thing. When it comes to the specific uh, challenges and the issues, well, with that, you can have a clear image, and it is uh, relatively easier to realize that. And uh, from time to time, I ask the very different thing, uh, difficult things. I ask a lot of difficult uh, things. Uh, as to them, but they always make their best effort uh, to come up with a certain outcome. Uh, that's why I w w really would like to support AIA. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This can be the last question. Okamura san, uh, Ito san, I have a question to you. Analytics ODX. What is the biggest challenge uh, you think right now? And also, what is uh, the technology which must be supplemented uh, or uh, technologies which are still missing in the DX you are aiming for? Compared to before, computing power has been substantially improved compared to before. And the variety of data, uh, setting aside uh, their accuracy, there may be some variability from country to country, but it's not possible to obtain data to a certain degree. The so-called data scientists uh, do exist in a certain number. So if we say, uh, can we do this? Uh, it has been realized to a certain degree. So I'm not so worried here, but the results we generate must be interpreted 
uh, discussed such illiteracy, as I have been saying from the beginning, that's the biggest challenge. Because discounted uh, net present value uh, with a probability adjustment, uh, still it's difficult. If it's integrated into just one number as a point estimation, it's very uh, difficult to go away from that uh, simplicity and easiness. It will take time, and um, everybody cannot come to the same level overnight. So from very sensitive people, we'd like to spread gradually over time. And uh, easier to understand examples can be utilized well to uh, disseminate and uh, educate. That is going to be necessary to enhance the awareness. Technology-wise, I'm not so worried. But uh, there would be a new theories into the future. They can incorporate them um, one after another. But the literacy for those who uh, receive this, uh, it's going to be the biggest challenge for us, in my view. My answer is going to be is something very similar. The democratization of uh, data scientists is often talked about. The entire employees of the company, analytics and uh, data literacy and analysis literacy must be retained by them. That's important. On the other hand, the uh, specialist groups, data scientists, must uh, communicate uh, easy to understand to those who don't have such expertise. Storytelling capabilities are very important. If there is an answer, if they talk about something different in a difficult to understand way, nobody would be able to uh, understand. So this is going to be necessary. If I, may, if I may add, as I said, in the clinical development, clinical study, analysis, specialists do exist. For drug discovery, we have a tr drug disco discovery focused people. When it comes to real world data, which we talked about a few times. We have uh, lots of real-world data uh, in the world, uh, in the uh, healthcare uh, environment. Uh, that's uh, the observational studies uh, with secondary usage. Uh, there are professionals and uh, the clinical uh, development people are uh, the experts in the experiments. Different analytic capabilities do exist within the company. As was mentioned, computer capabilities have been enhanced. Such capabilities to analyze the e pharma business are already sufficient. Easy to understand a way to explain and how to use this in the decision making process. Um, whether we can collaborate among different uh, divisions and departments, I think those are the challenges we have. Thank you very much. Well, uh, it's the time, so with this, we would like to close Q&A session. There are some questions we were not able to answer, and if you have any additional questions, please contact uh, the person in charge of our company. With this, we would like to close today's webinar. Everybody, thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you so much.